In this video I made a new native terrarium. Let's take a look at how that went. The first thing I did was going foraging out in nature on a rainy afternoon. I want to take this plant. In the bucket. Let's get some dirt from here as well. It looks like good soil. This is a nice stick. In the bucket you go. Let's take some rocks for aesthetic purposes. Here we have some wild charcoal with cigarette bud. Let's take some of this as well. I also want to take some fresh bark. This is practically falling off on its own. Obviously you don't want to go around pulling bark off trees, they don't like it. There don't seem to be any animals on it, but there's some lichen growing on top of it. Let's flip this tile. Oh wow, there's a beautiful centipede. Wait, oh, I missed the bucket. These are armadillidium isopods. Let's take some of those. Another one. Do you want to walk? I guess not. Here's a very tiny beetle. Oh wow, it's beautiful. Always flip tiles back guys. It's getting a bit too dark, but I also like to search underneath leaves, in this case fern leaves. That's an earthworm. Cool. If we take a look at this piece of bark, it looks like there's actually a spider inside of a little cocoon. Uh, well, that's very cool. I also want to put in some seeds from this plant, the famous life in jars plant. Euphorbia leuconeura, if I'm correct. Um, and it has seeds a lot and uh, I want to take some of those and put them in the terrarium as well. I'm probably gonna find some better seeds though. <laughs> okay guys, I uh, had a little trouble getting everything in the shot, but uh, it really is me. Um, I'm going to use uh, this trusty 10 liter jar you are probably all familiar with right now. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do is add a little uh, drainage layer from clay pebbles. Yep, that's not enough. That's looking a lot better. So what I'm now gonna do is take some of the wild charcoal we found and uh, crush it up a bit and add it on top of this so it can filter the water a little bit at least that's a theory I'm not sure how much it's gonna actually work and maybe these pieces are too large as well but we'll see <laughs> looking at it now it looks kind of pointless but oh well um, the next thing I'm gonna do 
is add some dirt now I, what I wanted to do was make a little gradient so there's a, a base layer of dirt all around and then I want to kind of make a slope in this area so we'll try if you can do that and that's one I also <laughs> I'm not sure if I actually have enough dirt um, let's hope so it's not looking too great right now to be honest but oh well um, let's save the grass for later oh, more charcoal let's add it as well I'm just gonna dump it all in here and we'll <coughs> escape it later. It's really quite wet, as you can see from the condensation on the glass. And there goes the earthworm. Yep. So, uh, well, it looks like me. Wait, maybe we do have enough. So I'm gonna make a little bit of a base layer here, um, and then try to make a slope here. It's already falling down. <laughs> it's already not working, but I have tools. Let's uh, add this piece of bark right here and try to see if we can get some of the dirt underneath it and then let's add this layer of dirt with some plants in it right here and this plant which is not looking too hot right now will uh, plant it here I'm honestly I don't think it's gonna do too well in here but oh well um, I'm already escaping how about that so we also have some rocks and I'm just gonna this is not actually a rock it's uh, something of a towel yeah that looks nice doesn't it fantastic Add a rock here, add a rock here. And then I really like this piece of wood. I want it to be something of a centerpiece. So let's put it in the center. We have a millipede. I don't know if you can see it. That's a millipede. Awesome. <laughs> but actually I might do this later because there's still a lot more stuff I have to add. For instance, this piece of grass, which can go right here. Another earthworm. And actually, I'm going to put this bark behind this bark. Just dump that in there. Because we still need to add this plant. Oh boy, it's going to get full in here and I also want to add some of this uh, I for actually forgot the name I'll put it on the screen and I just found this the other day I'm going to put just a little bit of it in this terrarium as well my vision was to plant it on this slope right here that's not actually that much of a slope right now, but oh well. A nice stick that can go right here. And then the centerpiece, la pièce de résistance. Oh, that can go right in the center. Great. Uh, 
and uh, it'll grow in on itself. Uh, it's not perfectly planted right now, but uh, if it doesn't die, it'll grow in quite nicely. And of course, I uh, shouldn't forget to uh, plant some seeds of the what's it called? The uh, yep, that one. Take a look at this. Nothing. Now take a look at this. Ugh. Porcelio scabber. We didn't we don't have those in the terrarium yet. So let's add some. And there we go. It's quite hard to film all the animals living in this jar, because most of the species are species that usually live either in the soil or underneath rocks and pieces of bark. Nevertheless, I'll show you what I did manage to film. What we have here is a little difficult to see, but it looks like it might be a tiny harvestman, possibly a young one. In any case, it's definitely an arachnid. What we have here is an arachnid as well, a jumping spider in fact. And as you'll see, it is camouflaged extremely well, which is quite fascinating. If you look very closely, you can see it moving its peripalps, the white fluffy bits. I think it might be actively smelling. Jumping spiders are very intelligent hunters and this one will most likely prey on springtails and small insects. That is, if it doesn't walk out of the jar before I close it. In the last few frames we can see a centipede. As far as I know, there are three isopod species in this terrarium. Porcelio scabber, Philoschia muscorum, the common striped woodlouse, and Armadillidium vulgare, the roly-poly. So far I've only seen one Armadillidium walking around very briefly, but mostly Porcelio scabber. There's probably quite a few different springtail species in the terrarium, which will play an important role in the ecosystem. They will eat decaying plant matter and will hopefully keep any fungus in check. They will also probably be preyed upon by any predators, like the centipedes or maybe even the jumping spider or a different predator that we didn't discover yet. There's also a tiny snail roaming around in this soon to be close terrestrial ecosystem. I am not completely sure what species it is, although I think it's probably a white lipped snail, also known as garden banded snail, Sepea hortensis. If that's the case, it's still quite a young one. Right now it's stuck itself to the glass, which gives us an opportunity to look at a snail that's doing that. But it feels like violating its privacy in an odd way. There's quite a few more animal species in this jar that we haven't seen on camera right now. For instance, the tiny beetle we put in there. Two of the three isopod species, the centipedes and millipedes, and the sandhopper I've put in the jar, as well as the earthworms. I wouldn't be surprised if there's also animal species in the jar that we aren't aware of as of now. Hopefully we'll see more of all of them in future updates. I really like the centerpiece in this closed terrarium. It reminds me of a big old tree in the middle of a forest. I added some more moss on top of this shtick, which is more clearly visible from above. Let's take a tour of the jar, beginning with this plant, which is probably going to die. If it does, it will be a great food source for the springtails, isopods, millipedes, earthworms and bacteria. Here we have a piece of bark with some moss growing on top of it and some beautiful lichens like it. Here we have some of the gold moss stone crop, also known as wallpepper, 
which is a lovely tiny native succulent. It actually looks like it's already starting to grow quite nicely. Here we have some moss. Those little sticks you see coming out of it are sporophytes, which means that this moss just reproduced. This is the part of the terrarium with grass. In my experience, grass sometimes does well in closed terrariums, sometimes it doesn't do well, and sometimes it suddenly starts to grow after a year. So it will be very interesting to see how it's going to do in this terrarium. This here is some ground ivy, Glecoma hederacea. We also have this species in the closed peludarium, where we've seen that it can do really well in closed ecosystems. So I have high hopes that this plant can thrive inside this soon to be closed terrarium. Here's some more of the gold moss stone crop, already standing quite erect. The creeping charlie is actually flowering right now, which is quite nice. Because the soil is still very moist, I will leave it open for a few days to let some of the water evaporate. But when I do close it airtight, it will look something like this. When it's closed airtight, we have a closed terrestrial ecosystem. In a nutshell, the plants provide the animals with food and oxygen, and the animals provide the plants with carbon dioxide and indirectly with nutrients. That is a severe oversimplification, but we'll go more in depth in a later video about this project. Together with the hemp terrarium, this is the biggest closed terrarium I've ever made. I disassembled the hemp terrarium because the hemp died, but the ecosystem itself was still intact. In the other eternal terrariums I made, the plants always all died, and all that was left was algae, fungus and gross stuff. So I really hope this time will be different. Only time will tell. So if you don't want to miss that, well, you're going to have to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Thank you very much for watching and good chai!